Hey guys, something awesome just happened, so I have got to hurry. Come with me, okay? I am so fired up. I was going downstairs to get some uh, water just a moment ago, and I gotta be quiet and careful here. There is a red-tailed hawk, a red-tailed hawk out in my um, backyard right now, and I am not going to switch this up. I don't think you're gonna be able to see it, but it is, uh, it's straight out there and I don't want it to see me so I'm trying to be quiet now but I thought I'd bring you along with me for this week's episode uh, I gotta hurry because <laughs> I don't want him to go away but I have my Canon 5DSR ready to go with my uh, 1 to 400 millimeter zoom lens and I'm not expecting to get really any great in-flight photos due to the fact that there's not a lot of room and uh, to get out there. There's not a lot of flight room for him, so I'm not going to have, I don't believe, an option to really get any cool birds in flight uh, photos of it. But what I'm gonna try to do is, um, I'm gonna try to be quiet, so I'm gonna talk, and then I am going to try to uh, slowly sneak over there and get low to the ground to see if I can get at least some good portraits of some good portraits of this bird. It's really bright out here, okay? I don't want him to see me, sorry. I, I typically, if I could, I would set this camera in such a position that you could see all of this taking place, but of this bird and at least you can see uh, I don't know if you notice but I am purposely low I am on the ground right now and it's because I want to get it at eye level if possible I gotta stop messing around I'm gonna lose this opportunity now I, I wish I would have watered my lawn this morning because it is so wet here He doesn't see me right now. <sighs> He's just chilling. I'll show you this in just a minute. But as you can see, I know I might look silly laying on the wet grass right now, but there's a purpose for it. I'm trying to stay low to the ground to kind of get him at eye level. speed and uh, that's allowing me to freeze action oh he sees me <laughs> he's just kind of looking right now hey he's just chilling Well, I don't know how fruitful that was. I'm gonna step inside for a second. Uh, whew, it's hot out there right now. Um, well, he, uh, he saw me obviously, and uh, he flew over to my neighbor's house right over there. I think he's on, a, hopefully he's just on the back back side of the fence he's out of sight right now but I'm gonna uh I guess I don't have to whisper okay let me talk normal again <laughs> um yes that was awesome that was so awesome uh I love red tail hawks they are well, well in birding photography as a as a wildlife and nature photographer um I realize I'm walking around probably making some of you dizzy so uh I'm going to set my camera right here for you and uh, there, 
<laughs> um, as a wildlife and nature photographer, one of the aspects of nature that I love photographing are birds. I Birds are beautiful creatures, but red-tailed hawks are the bird that actually got me excited about birding photography. Uh, let me show you some images that I've captured of these birds in the past. Um, uh, before I do though, let me also say, uh, I am gonna show you the photos I uh, just got of this guy if he doesn't come back. And then at the end, I wanna do a little bit, I just thought about it, I wanna do a little bit of a documentary of when I first fell in love with photographing red-tailed hawks. But for now, uh, here you can see a couple of images that I did take that I really love of red-tailed hawks and and it were, was these images and many like them. I've taken thousands upon thousands of pictures of these birds, uh, but it, it's a red-tailed hawk that really fueled my passion for the birding side of photography and it's been such a pleasure for me. Um, some important things to know um, about today's photo shoot. There are a few things, and that's why I really am videotaping this for you. Uh, there's a few things. The first thing is always be ready. It's the idea of always being ready, having your camera with you. If you're a serious photographer or even somebody who wants to get serious about photography, the one thing that you need with you is your equipment. You need to have your photography gear with you. Um, there are times where you might not have your camera, and as you'll see, I'm gonna be doing an episode on iPhone photography. That's what I'm recording this video on uh, right now is my iPhone. And normally, uh, I don't use my iPhone for uh, uh, photography uh, videos. I have a camera that is, is set up for that, but um, I'm using what I can right now. And, um, <clears throat> And so anyways, I'm going to be doing more of these on the spot uh, photography episodes because I want to help you see life through my eyes and my mindset. Uh, uh, developing the eye of a photographer, which means you're always on the look. I'm always out looking. I've been doing, uh, I've been really focusing on photography tutorials to help you, the beginner or the admit, intermediate or even an advanced enthusiast photographer who might not know all of the different compositional methods and settings for photography. That's what I've been focusing on so that when you get out and take pictures of whatever, whether it's people, landscapes, animals, if you learn the essentials to composition in photography, it doesn't matter what genre of photography you're in, uh, you're going to take absolutely uh, amazing photographs over the course of time because you're going to have the tools to do it. But right now, again, one of the things I want to um, convey to you is my mind is always looking. Uh, I'm always looking. Whenever I come downstairs, I'm always looking outside. I, I very rarely expect to see my buddy there, the red-tailed hawk, but that bird has visited us a few times. I'm so thankful because God knows my love for red-tailed hawks. Uh, but because I was looking and not in my own little world, uh, thinking, okay, I need to get coffee and get back up and get to work, uh, I was able to see it, quickly ran up. I had my camera gear ready. As always, you always want to have your gear ready and I grabbed my little video mic stand that I'm talking to you with my camera on and I, I came down and everything you saw is what I videotaped. But the point is, the point is you always wanna be ready. And in addition to being ready, you uh, you want to have your camera set up correctly. So on the way down, even, even actually when I grabbed my camera, the first thing I did was turn it on even before I turned on the video camera because I wanted to make sure that I was not only in shutter priority mode, shutter priority mode on Canon cameras, I'm representing for Canon today. Although, you know, there are a lot of great brands out there. Uh, and I'm going to be talking about how to purchase a new camera system in the future and how once you kind of purchase a certain system, like I have Canon, and you start investing in lenses, you kind of get married to it. And I'll explain uh, that in another episode. But um, I made sure that I was in shutter priority. I didn't want to mess around. I wanted to have a fast uh, shutter speed so that I could freeze action if and when it took off, it did take off. And I want to guarantee you, I don't think I captured anything but a blurry bird flying across. So there, I know you've probably seen other photographs of mine, like, wow. But uh, today's episode will show you, you can't capture the most amazing images or even in focus images 
every time, but you got to give it your best. And, and that's what I did. But this episode wasn't so much to show off those pictures, uh, but more or less just to give you a mindset, you know, uh, you got it. I was quiet. That bird did not even know I was there when I was down on the ground, but uh, I'm, I, I watered my lawn earlier. And so it was a little wet and uh, I felt like there were some bugs crawling on me. And so I was just, you know, just like, okay. I just thought, okay, I'm not going to be taking any award-winning photographs here in my backyard. And so uh, that's when I got up. And when I got up, he's looking at me like, dude, I see you. <laughs> and I'm like, I know you see me. Uh, I just don't want to lay down anymore. Uh, now, if I would have been out in the wild, if uh, out in nature, beautiful setting, I would have just laid low the whole time. I would have um, taken this tripod that I'm using here for this camera. I would have taken the uh, iPhone off and put my lens on and I would have videotaped uh, the event. It's just you do what you can, but you want to be ready and take advantage of every opportunity. And that's what I was trying to show you with this week's video is you go out day by day. Bring your camera with you if you're, if you're able to and be looking for uh, just uh, shots, photographs, images, subjects, clear subjects that you can take photographs of because you just never know what you might be blessed to fall upon or come across and be able to photograph it. Uh, but you have to you have to start looking through the eyes of a photographer and that's one of the things i'm trying to do with uh the uh, uh composition uh tutorials in the in the uh different methods of composition i'm trying to teach you these are things that i'm trying to do with those episodes to help you develop a photographer's eye and also mindset so that you're always looking for that photograph well hey um I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna take a peek outside to see if the bird is reappeared and get some more photos. And I doubt it, uh, I doubt that that's happened. So next I'm going to now uh, go up to my office and process these images in this video. And uh, I'll also, again, like I said, I also wanna show you uh, a series of images on red tail hawks that I, I did uh, kind of a documentary uh, style where I came across a, a red tail hawk adults that had some babies and, and the juveniles grew up and I, I took images of, of this process over a, a, a probably about a month a month month and a half time frame but I was really I was so blessed that I I just happened to get off work one day and I uh, I stopped by the nest and that was the day that the juveniles actually took flight for the first time. So I got some really cool images of that. And I want to show you that as well, just as a treat, because those images, uh, I think some of them really sparkle. In your mind. Hey guys, here we are back in my office. And what I want to do now is take a look at some footage that I've captured over the last few years of red tail hawks. Hopefully you'll be able to see why I have such a love for these incredible birds. A lot of bird photography is a lot of patience, and so uh, sometimes it can take a while to get the right shots, sometimes it takes days. Here you see an image of a juvenile red tail hawk. Uh, there are actually two other hawks that are in the nest with it, but on this particular day I was actually trying out a new zoom lens a Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter zoom. And these are a couple of the images that I captured with this lens. Again, these are the juvenile red tail hawks that I followed and photographed for about a month or so. Now on this next particular day, uh, you can see that it was an overcast day and this is why the blue skies have been replaced with a nice contrasting white. The adult red tail hawks have actually captured two different meals for their three juveniles that day. And I'm not sure what this is in uh, this hawk's mouth, whether it's a field mice or, um, or some other rodent. But here is my favorite sequence that I, I actually almost missed that day. Now this first photo actually wasn't from this sequence. This is just another image that I took where it was uh, blue skies out. But as you can see, um, the red tail hawk is flying out in the horizon. And I just happened on this one particular day, 
I just happened to look out over the horizon and I saw a couple specks way out in the distance and I kept my eyes on it. And it turned out to be both adult red-tailed hawks. And as they got closer, I realized that one of them had something in its talons. And as you can see, it turned out to be a rabbit. And as the hawk flew back to the nest to bring the rabbit to the juveniles, I was able to capture uh, this sequence of images that I really liked. Another part of this encounter was that the juvenile red-tailed hawks were just uh, going crazy with, um, with their calls for their mom and dad, especially when they saw that uh, they had food with it. As you can see, we've got the three juveniles in the nest here. Uh, the adult that brought the uh, rabbit back is in the middle of the nest and, and now the other adult, which I'm assuming is the mom because it's actually a bigger uh, red-tailed hawk, uh, is following up in the rear. And then here you can see that the adult male has some food in its uh, beak and it was actually feeding the babies at that time. And so that was just such an incredible experience for me. Now this was my favorite of that sequence of shots as the wings of the red-tailed hawk are fully spread and the rabbit is gripped in the raptor's talons. And like I said, this was such a special moment and a dramatic encounter for me to witness firsthand. These are, are definitely the types of encounters that keep me going back out for more. It, it's just incredible to watch nature in action. Well, let's go ahead and look at some footage of another encounter I had with these birds as well, where you're gonna see one of the hawks capturing yet another rabbit. You can't see the rabbit on the video or in the images at first, but you know, when I show the video, you're going to see that the hawk's eventually gonna fly away, but it's going to come back again and get part of the rabbit, and you'll see that sequence of uh, footage in photos uh, at the end of this little segment. And so here we see the red-tailed hawk is flying down and it actually um, captured the rabbit. Sorry, I don't have a tripod here, but I'm trying to hold it as still as possible. I got my big 400 millimeter lens. And right over there, we've got a red-tailed hawk. It's just uh, gotten some food. He's over there right in front of the, the log there. Sorry if there's a movement on this camera. I just, it's, I've been photographing this guy for a while. I don't have my tripod or monopod with me right now. And so my arms are already kind of spent. So please forgive me for the camera shake. But if you can see him popping up his head right there in front of that wooden stump in the middle of the uh, camera or viewfinder, I've been tracking these hawks for the last couple months. Uh, Oh, there he is right there, popping his head up a little bit more. It's actually three of them in the area right now. There he goes. There he goes. So here we see I've captured some images of the hawk as it's landing on the tree. And now it's just watching the rabbit and it's about to jump down and capture its meal for the night. And I just love these uh, action shots. The, the way I was able to freeze action like this, again, is with a fast shutter speed, and that's why we're able to freeze, out, uh, freeze the action and capture these uh, incredible shots. And I love this photo right here, just the coloring and how his wings are spread. And there he's got his legs extended and he's, um, right on top of the rabbit and uh, he, he's got it. A successful hunt. Now it's as if he's looking around to see if anybody uh, noticed him. And so in the video you saw him just fly away and what happened uh, a little while later is he flew back to the spot and he uh, got part of the rabbit again. I guess he'd taken the head off the rabbit uh, the first time around because in this next sequence of images, you're gonna see some extraordinary uh, footage of pictures as the red-tailed hawk is going to 
take the rabbit's head and he's going to be chased by, I believe it's a kingbird. And so let's take a look at that. So here we see the red tail hawk. Uh, it's hard to tell, but he's actually got a rabbit's head in his talons and he's got a kingbird, the yellow bird right on top of him, his back landing on him. Uh, that bird is doing what is called mobbing, trying to chase him out of the area. And this is one of my favorite shots, really clear picture of the rabbit's head in his talons. You got the kingbird um, going after his head, trying to move him out. And it was just such an amazing moment. I couldn't even tell exactly what was going on at this time. I knew there was a bird with the hawk um, chasing him out. I thought he had something in his talons, but it, it was so far away, I couldn't really tell what my naked eye, but I was just uh, doing 10 frames per second, about 28 frames at a time, capturing all the action. And it wasn't really until I got home that I was able to see just what an extraordinary moment I'd captured uh, on my camera uh, that day. And here you see that the Kingbird is now finally letting up. He's chased the red tail hawk away from wherever he wanted him away from. I'm sure uh, that bird probably has a nest or just a territory that it didn't feel comfortable having the hawk in his area. So the hawk lands on the tree and he starts eating uh, his catch, his prize. But these are some of the extraordinary moments that you can capture when you're out in nature. All right, so now what I wanna do is go to uh, really the most extraordinary um, event that I was able to capture uh, with these red tail hawks. Like I'd mentioned before, I had been following them and photographing them for a month, probably a month to a month and a half uh, time frame. And I just happened to be so lucky, I was so blessed that uh, I showed up on the day when they finally uh, were uh, able to fly for the first time. And I'd never seen it before, and so this is just a really incredible moment. Let's take a look at that now. And so here we see we've got the juveniles that are just in the nest, and they're, they've been spreading their wings uh, for a good half hour now, flapping them and just kind of getting ready to to fly, even though I had no idea what I was about to witness. But here you see they've taken off and one of them is jumping from tree branch to tree branch. And I just thought it was so weird. I didn't even, like I said, I didn't even realize what was going on, but um, he, uh, the bird was actually making its way to the highest uh, peak of this tree. And he just kept going from branch to branch. And I was so fortunate to photograph it. And here we see that he's made his way up pretty far in the tree already, but now he's going to really start his ascent up towards the tree. And this is really the furthest that he's ever flown at this moment before he takes off for good, where he goes uh, from this location on a tree all the way across to um, this uh, other area where he lands high atop all the trees. He was way up. And now he's just kind of looking around, composing himself. And you can see in this picture here, he's just leaning down, he's ready to leap up towards the other, uh, towards the other branch. And he leaps, jumps, and makes it to the final height of this tree. And then the moment uh, we've all been waiting for uh, takes place. Uh, as you can see, his talons are uh, inches off of that branch and he is in flight for the very first time. And it was just such a, a wonderful moment for me to experience uh, and to be a part of. Again, watching nature take place as God intended it. That's the juvenile there flying on his own for good. Hey, if you find uh, this video helpful, you you know what I wanna ask if you've watched my videos before, please, that little uh, uh, like button, that like button, please hit it. Uh, hit like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. I'm trying so hard to reach a th uh, my first goal with this YouTube channel, which is uh, a 1,000 subscribers. And, uh, and please try to help me get there, that'd be great. And also, um, be on the lookout because my wife and son and I, probably in the next two to three weeks, 
Um, we've got a really crammed schedule right now, but in the next two to three weeks, we're gonna be doing a video. I'm gonna bring my sweet wife, Lindsay, and my uh, son, Jeremiah, uh, who's also sweet. <laughs> I'm gonna bring them into a video episode with me, and the three of us are gonna do an episode, and I'm gonna explain about a really cool contest that we are going to do, just to thank everyone uh, for all of your support. I mean, if you look, I don't know, I think I'm over 650 subscribers now, and I keep saying it's been about a month. It may have, it may be coming up on two months now uh, that I've been trying to do this. And I, I just can't thank you enough for all of your support, all of your help. But if you find this helpful, hey, hit the like, subscribe button, even forward it to a friend, post it on your social media. Um, and um, again, uh, thanks so much. And um, go out and capture the world. <laughs>